Hi, I'm Spencer Kaufman, Applications Engineer with SPX Cooling Technologies. Today we're out at our R&D facility and we're going to discuss the main differences between a counterflow cooling tower and a crossflow cooling tower. The fundamental difference between a crossflow and a counterflow cooling tower is how the air being pulled into the tower is interacting with the processed water being cooled. So right now we're standing inside of our NC Everest, which is a crossflow cooling tower. And the way it works is water will start at the top of the fill and work its way down the fill while the air is being pulled into the tower horizontally with respect to the falling water up and out the tower fan. The way a crossflow cooling tower is designed allows for a really large plenum area. That large plenum area allows for, in some cases, full-size access doors. It allows us the room to inspect the cold water basin, look at the drift eliminators, and even room for mechanical access platforms so that we can check out and service the motor and gearbox and fan at the top of the cooling tower. Another fundamental difference between crossflow and counterflow cooling towers is the water distribution system. On a crossflow cooling tower like the one we're standing on top right now, the process water or condenser water is piped up to the top of the tower, goes through what we call an HC valve or flow control valve, and then distributes into what we call the hot water distribution basin. The hot water distribution basin on a crossflow tower is gravity fed, meaning the only driving force behind the nozzles is the hydrostatic head of water above the nozzle. One of the benefits of a gravity fed distribution basin is the ability for it to handle variable flow or low flow applications. Because of the nature of the gravity fed system, we can go down to as low as 30% of the design flow and still be able to predict the performance of the cooling tower. We also really like crossflow cooling towers for cold weather operations. With the gravity fed water distribution system, you have even distribution of water across the fill, which prevents any channeling during a low flow scenario, which you might see in a counterflow cooling tower. If you start to develop channeling in your fill in cold weather operations, that can lead to ice development, which could potentially damage the tower. Another reason we like crossflow cooling towers for cold weather operation is because of the integral louvers to the fill. Those integral louvers keep any splash out that would happen on a traditional blade louver close to the fill and in turn close to the heat source. When you're close to the heat source, that keeps things thawed and prevents any ice development. Now we're standing underneath our MD Everest, which is a counterflow cooling tower. In a counterflow tower, the air travels underneath, turns upward and goes through the tower, traveling counter to the processed fluid falling through the fill. Counterflow cooling towers have several more fill options relative to a crossflow cooling tower. This is important for certain applications where we need a more forgiving fill for dirty water applications. We're sitting in the plenum area of our MD Everest counterflow cooling tower. In a counterflow cooling tower, the air is being induced into the tower from underneath and pulled up through the fill, past the water distribution system, past the drift eliminators, and out through the fan discharge. The water on a counterflow tower is pumped up into a manifold which is then distributed out several branch arms and in turn several nozzles attached to those branch arms. Each branch arm and nozzle has an associated pressure drop which then makes this water distribution system a pressurized system. Because this is a pressurized water distribution system that makes it a lot more susceptible to water channeling in very low flow applications. This can sometimes lead to freezing in cold weather operations or scale development in non-cold weather areas. Counterflow cooling towers are certainly needed for several types of applications and have several advantages associated with them. First being that up to a certain tonnage range, they will have a smaller footprint. Second being, because of the way it is designed, it will tend to have a lighter operating weight relative to a crossflow cooling tower at the same tonnage range. And finally, a counterflow cooling tower has several more selections and fill types, which is sometimes needed depending on the water quality of your application. So in conclusion, crossflow cooling towers, like the one behind me here, tend to serve us really well for larger maintenance access, variable flow, and cold weather applications. On the other hand, counterflow cooling towers are great when we might need a smaller footprint, a lighter operating load, or more selection or variety in fill types, depending on the water quality of the application. Again, I'm Spencer Kaufman, Applications Engineer with SPX Cooling Technologies, and thanks for watching.